and we only get paid uh, straight per hour. We don't get paid overtime. And not just in industries you'd expect, like agriculture, everything from food service to healthcare, even doctors. If a physician is fully qualified and able to practice, um, our main goal is, is filling our vacancies. We've heard a lot about labor shortages in Canada. It's no secret Canada is in the middle of a huge labor shortage. It's the country's labor shortage. A shortage of skilled labor. There's been explosive growth in approvals of temporary foreign workers to fill jobs like food counter attendants, from 170 jobs approved in 2018 to last year more than 8,000. In the healthcare field, around 450 jobs approved in 2018 to last year more than 4,000. Across the board, employers were approved to hire around 240,000 temporary foreign workers in 2023, more than double what they were a half decade earlier. But is there a better way? Danilo DeLeon walks the same halls of an Edmonton University campus that he once cleaned as a temporary foreign worker. An experience from several years ago, he doesn't remember it fondly. If not for my uh, daughter, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want her to stay here, but, but there's no job back home. The program has been scrutinized for its potential impact on the economy and on migrant workers themselves. There are cases where um, they're not getting paid, they're getting paid less uh, than what's in the contract. Um, they uh, are getting uh, sa their salary being deducted. The federal government loosened hiring restrictions coming out of the pandemic. There was uh, operators who were tapping into this in order to be able to revive and reopen their businesses and to be able to service the communities. Restaurants say they try to hire locally, but sometimes they can't. There is a challenge in some of these communities from a population density perspective and in, with aging populations. But some experts push back, arguing that if businesses are struggling to find staff, they don't need a new source of workers, they need to offer better wages. All we hear about are labor shortages. So we have to begin to recognize that this really is a self-serving narrative, mostly coming from corporate Canada. One sector that's seen some of the fastest growth is one that's barely relied on temporary foreign workers in the past, healthcare. Most of that surge in temporary foreign workers were nurse aides, but there's also growing interest in hiring nurses and doctors. So we began using the temporary foreign worker program about a year ago. MediCenters Canada, which runs a network of walk-in clinics, says it's hiring more doctors from the UK, Ireland and Australia. It says the program has been the fastest way to get them work permits, and once here, the new hires can apply for permanent residency. The demand that we're seeing from patients for access to a family doctor currently far outweighs our supply of physicians that we have that are have the capacity to take on additional patients. So the Temporary Foreign Worker Program has been really instrumental in filling some of these key vacancies that we've had. One expert says the fact healthcare employers are turning to this program is a worrying sign. I think this is another example of the overall health care workforce crisis. We see um, high levels of workload, high levels of burnout, high levels of attrition. And if you can imagine that, that's a vicious circle. And we have to interrupt that in some way, shape or form. She says it's a stopgap and doesn't change the reasons workers are leaving. There are a variety of other types of strategies that are much more local and focused on retaining the workforce returning workers who have left the workforce or have left for other sectors or have left the public sector for the private sector. In another industry, this Brampton manufacturer is exploring a different route to address a shortage of workers, which is a growing problem for them. People are not entering these fields at the same rate as, as the older workers are leaving. IKO Industries has hired TFWs before and is now looking at another federal program. The Economic Mobility Pathways pilot matches employers with international refugees. Proponents say it offers stability for workers and businesses. Workers are given permanent residency and they can bring their families, so they're likely to stick around, providing some certainty for employers. This program affords us an opportunity to access people with specialized skills um, that are not really easy to find in, uh, in the current Canadian marketplace. Cesar Franco is set to move to Canada with his family to take a job at IKO's Kamloops plant. Originally from Venezuela, he'll be putting his engineering skills to use as a plant mechanic.
I have my wife and two daughters. Yeah, they are they are they are, they are so excited to, to go to Canada. My my daughters all every every day uh, tell me, hey dad, when we when we leave it. Hiring refugees on a permanent basis could entice more employers in the future, especially as Ottawa moves to limit the TFW program amid a softer labour market. I hope that this can be a program that uh, increasingly employers can, you know, not shift entirely, but certainly begin to test out if this can be a scalable and ongoing part of their recruitment strategies. As the population ages, there will continue to be a need for immigration to fill labour shortages. But debate continues about how these programs should thread the needle between the needs of business and society.